Hello, and welcome back to The Foundation Presents. My name is Mike Schramm, your host and one of the board members for the Foundation for West Hartford Public Schools, a private nonprofit group dedicated to building upon the existing curriculum in the West Hartford's public school system to enrich the students' experience. On today's show, we'll have two guests, a teacher from Hall to discuss his grant, and then the donor who gave the money for that grant. I'm very excited to talk to both of them, and I hope that you are too. And now I'd like to welcome on Michael Wilkos, who is a technology and engineering teacher at Hall. Michael, can you tell me a little bit about your grant? Um, our grant uh, is the Enable 3D Printed Hand Challenge. Uh, we came up with uh, this idea of basically crowdsourcing our 3D printer uh, and then donating the results of that print to charity. Um, can you tell me a bit about what Enable is and, and the, the cause involved in it? Okay, um, well traditionally when um, you have a child going up, growing up without a hand um, through accident, disease, or whatever, um, they typically don't get the best prosthetics until they're starting to grow and they're starting to slow down because anything that they build they'll outgrow in a year or two um, mm -hmm. as they go through. So it was deemed you know, not worthwhile to, to try and do that because you're just going to keep on refitting with these expensive medical equipment. Um, the Enable community came through and said, well, 3D printing is here. We can easily print different pieces if we get a good design, uh, scale up the size very easily, and it's about 8 to 10 bucks worth of filament to print out uh, one of our designs. And wow. it's just a couple of hours on a printer. So you're telling me that this hand right here is eight to ten dollars and a couple hours. A couple hours, and then there's about fifteen dollars of hardware uh, to run the tensioners and keep all the pieces together, and like little, uh, I like the little grippy fingers on the end of the tips, kind of add a little bit to it. Now, what inspired you to work on this grant in the first place? Um, I have to give credit to one of my assistant principals, Shelly Solomon. Um, she actually came to me with an article saying a school in Manchester is doing this. Uh, do you think it might be something you would want to try for a foundation for public schools? And so I read the article. I went to their website. I browsed around, um, and I said, "This is pretty cool. We definitely have downtime with the printer, and it'd be nice to have something happening with it." Um, and so I said, "All right, let's see if I can get some other people on board at Conard and make it a both parts of town type of thing." Mm -hmm. um, and the other teachers were interested in running it, and we said, "We have the perfect vehicle with our engineering classes." Um, so we ran a couple of test prints last year with our second year engineering students um, and now uh, we're kind of going on and the idea is that Conard's going to build half, we're going to build half and the goal was to, with the grant, get enough materials for 100 hands. Wow, so each class will build 50 hands? Uh, I think there's going to be 30 in mine and 30 in another and then 30 in another because there's two Conard classes working on it and I only have one engineering class at Hall. Oh great, okay. so. How does that cross-town collaboration work in terms of the students getting together? Do they ever meet from one school to the other, or is it mostly just your individual classes are, are doing their work? Um, in the past, we've done Google Hangouts, like when our schedules align, and it's few and far between. It's been really <laughs> cool because, you know, oh, we're going to pitch a project to the eighth period class over at Conard, um, and we've done Google Hangouts, and it was just one year, it was perfect, and then all the other years it's kind of been, oh, you're teaching at first, I'm teaching at fifth. It's not going to work out. Um, but yeah, we will collaborate. They will know what's going on um, with the other students. Uh, we're going to tie in some of our extracurricular clubs. I know Anthony Truss runs a TSA, Technology Student Association chapter at okay. Conard. Um, I have Hall Robotics, which is a VEX Robotics club, and I know they're going to work because they have to find opportunities to um, contribute to the community at large. Um, and so that's one of the things that they're going to do is they're going to work with uh, us in starting our Enable chapter um, to print these hands. Now, 3D printing seems to be something that you hear about all the time now. Everything is being 3D printed. It's the newest craze. When did the West Hartford Public School System get a 3D printer, and what was its primary use before this grant? Um, the first 3D printer that I'm aware of we had was in 2008. It was a really wow. good um, 3D printer, Stratasys. Um, and it was the same printer that I trained on when I was at Central Connecticut doing my undergraduate work. Um, and it was a really good industrial printer. The only problem was it was very expensive. Mm. Um, and it had a closed environment, could heat everything up. Um, we got it with um, grant money 
but the problem is is that it was kind of end of life cycle and they're like all right well now you've bought this one let's get the next model up like <laughs> uh, just to pull from apple you got to get the next iphone which yeah, exactly don't get the next iphone unless <laughs> unless you really want it um <laughs> So the idea was uh, MakerBot came out and they were really, really successful in marketing these smaller printers. Um, and I think ours was about 2,500. We got it with educational discount. Um, and we've been using it uh, regularly in the classroom since I think 2014 because our bigger printer, which was great and came out with never had a misprint, anything like that, um, high quality prints, but it just didn't have support and the materials to print the filament mm. um, ended up being like, you know, 35 cents uh, a gram versus the spools that we have now are like two to three cents a gram depending on how much you buy. Wow, so this is a much more cost effective way of doing it. Uh, more cost effective, but it's really a hobbyist's machine. Um, okay. There's a lot of work that goes into like fine tuning all the different settings to make sure you're mm. really spot on for the printing. Um, because we'll have times where it'll print and the filament will just kind of bird's nest and go everywhere. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's the worst thing is that when I get into school in the morning and I left the print running overnight, crossing my fingers, and I get in and I look and I'm like, oh, no, nope, got to reprint that. And that's uh, like six bucks of plastic we're not going to get back. But So who does that maintenance? Is that you or do you get the students involved with that a bit um, too? Some of the second year engineering students definitely work on that maintenance with us. Um, they... Uh, more or less, um, it's me, I'm in, I like reset the printer, try and get it going in the morning. Um, the engineering class is running midday this year, so they'll kind of watch it for me. Um, and then some of the other students also uh, work to maintain and let me know, hey, it's misprinting, you gotta go stop it, and they know to pause it and things like that. Now back to this grant, how do these hands tie in with the larger curriculum that you're teaching and the goals that you have in your classroom setting? So the larger curriculum ideas that we have are basically um, opening up any type of engineering. Um, and this one's kind of blending um, aesthetics, form and function, kind of fitting together, fitting the human body um, with that. So what the students end up doing is they end up exploring how is this design, how has it been uh, revised and iterated over the years because I think this is like version 11 of the Raptor hand and you can go oh. back and see all the old versions um, but with that, they're going to be evaluating and thinking, you know, how can this be applied? Can it be improved? Is there any way we can save materials or resources while it's being printed? Um, is there anything we can do to streamline the design process, the fabrication process, and the assembly process? Hmm. Um, so it ties in with the overarching themes that they're learning in our engineering classes of just evaluating the sustainability of design. Um, and then especially designing for a cause. Yeah, this sounds like a great real world applicable uh, concept to be teaching your students. Uh, and my understanding is that Trinity also has an Enable Club. Uh, do you have any sort of goals of maybe connecting with them, partnering up with them somehow to get the students at Hall and Connard interacting with these Trinity students? Well, um, when I applied for the grant and I got the grant accepted, um, I reached out to the Enable. I said, I want to start an Enable chapter at my school. And they have a really nice Google map that basically laid out everywhere across the country that has an Enable chapter and where printers are running. And I'm like, oh, what's in Hartford? So I scroll in and I zoom in and it's Trinity College. Um, I reached out to them and then we had set up a time to meet in October to try and see, hey, we were just wondering how you run things logistically. Um, you know, is this something that students could come and see and tour and, and visit Trinity and see? And is it something that, you know, give us feedback and we can sort of feed in and try and tie in and figure out what's the best way to approach this project because this is something that's new to us for mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, well, that sounds like a great burgeoning partnership. I hope that Trinity is excited, as excited about it as I am because it really sounds like an excellent opportunity to get these kids out of the classroom and into a different type of learning environment. And you hear nowadays about how the students need to be stimulated not just in the classroom but applying what they're learning to the real world. This seems like a fabulous way of doing that. Uh, I am, I'm, I'm also curious, your general thoughts on the foundation. Is this the first grant that you have gotten from us? And, and, and what are your thoughts about the foundation? Uh, no, this is actually the third grant I've gotten. The third, um, great. So I'm actually pretty good at like evaluating like, oh, what's a good project that we wanna do? Um, and in fact, last year we almost applied for two grants. Um, and then when course selection started coming out, we knew one of our uh, computer technology classes wasn't going to run. We're like, you know, we don't want to be greedy. We want to, we'll save it, we'll apply it, <laughs> and that way we'll have something for next year and sh sh spread the wealth. Um, so it's really good. I think um, in 2013, we got a grant for uh, building our own hobbyist CNC printer or CNC router. 
So basically, um, while this is additive manufacturing, so the printer runs along and adds a little bit layer by layer, okay. uh, a CNC router is subtractive manufacturing, and it basically takes a stock solid, usually wood, metal, um, something like that, mm -hmm. and it mills away layer by layer a design. Um, oh. So we built that, and we went through the grant, um, found a really good um, website, buildyourowncnc.com. Kind of simple, remember, easy to remember. There you go. Um, and we realized it wasn't as sustainable as we hoped it would be for a classroom setting. There weren't as many safety stop features that we would have wanted, uh, and we tried to implement those in. And so it ended up being a nice project for them to go through and assemble the CNC printer, but it's not something that they run on a daily basis. Um, once that happened, this was a goal that we had, was to get the CNC, print, or CNC router at um, Hall and or Conard. Once we went through and did this project and said, you know, we really need an industrial standard CNC router, we ended up getting one from Forest Scientific at Conard that's got an eight foot by uh, 16 foot bed, I think. And they run wow. and they mill uh, different pieces and create signs um, at Conard High School there. And then I send files over and hopefully have them printed in their spare time <laughs> or cut in their spare time. Fingers crossed, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the other grant that we got was uh, for uh, Raspberry Pi. Hmm. Raspberry Pi is a credit card sized computer about as powerful as an iPhone uh, 4S. Um, and the idea is it only costs about $35. So if you have a monitor and a keyboard, uh, you can run an operating system from a micro SD card. Uh, and it's open source hmm. and you can create different kiosk stations. I know uh, right now we're looking into maybe expanding and building a Raspberry Pi display kiosk. So it'll be a screen system that runs around the school, but it's run by a couple of Raspberry Pis that talk to each other on the network. So you update one station, have all these TVs update very quickly and not have to have a huge infrastructure wired throughout the school. Wow, well, those both sound like fascinating grants as well. I wish yeah. we had more time to talk about those as well. But Michael, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. And it sounds like you've got some great programs that you're working with. Oh, absolutely. And now I'd like to welcome on Mario Russo, who is a donor at our named grant level. Mario, can you tell me a bit about yourself and how you heard about the Foundation for West Hartford Public Schools and why you're a donor? Thank you. Um, well, I'm Mario Russo. I'm a State Farm Insurance Station. I've, uh, I've been in West Hartford for a little over nine years. And uh, um, as Asians, yeah, we... Mm, interact with the community daily um, and uh, Cindy, Cindy Brown, mm -hmm. which is a board member at the foundation, um, asked my customer uh, in a conversation years ago, she mentioned, well, um, I belong to the foundation and uh, we would love to get your support and State Farm support. So she invited me to an event, a fundraising event, the uh, West for Cooking event, mm -hmm. which uh, I had no idea that it was so awesome, <laughs> 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 particularly for the food, but don't tell that to <laughs> anyone. So uh, um, that's how we slowly began to get involved. Um, as I mentioned to you off camera before, we get approached by many uh, when it comes to uh, um, donating some money. But as a small business, it's hard to choose. Mm -hmm. and uh, it's also hard to understand who to give money to. Mm -hmm. um, so the foundation gave us an incredible vehicle to support schools. And, um, uh, and then this grant particularly and, um, interested me because exposes uh, our students, our children. Um, my son is, my youngest son is 16 and my oldest is 19. Mm -hmm. Uh, to technology, science, uh, and something so great that at the same time helps people. So going back to the beginning, Foundation gave me that uh, awesome option uh, of donating some money that is going to go very far, probably farther than uh, the dollar per dollar. And I should mention that you are the donor for the prosthetic hand grant that we just spoke to Michael about. That's right. Um, and this is the first time that you've given at that level, correct? That's right. C 
can you tell me a bit about your, uh, how you feel about the foundation now that you have a grant in your name and that you've been able to meet the teacher, one of the teachers who's carrying out the grant and see some of the work that he's doing with the students? Well, the level of excitement of this teacher, I mean, uh, it's not that we're giving a hundred thousand dollars, it was a thousand dollars. And uh, he was telling the story uh, um, uh, about the commitment, the understanding, the equipment that they manage and mm -hmm. the materials they need and the involvement of children. So I'm very excited, actually. So um, 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 the foundation um, um, actually uh, does m so much more than I thought. Uh, um, West Tarford, uh, it's um, a, a, a town that m makes education a big deal. That's what makes this town so great. And um, right now, funding, we all know that it's not easy to find. <laughs> yes, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> so again, uh, I was not too aware of how well managed the foundation is. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I had the chance to meet, well, I met you today, Mike, um, but Mrs. Brown, which we call it at the office, or Cindy. Mm -hmm. And um, then I also met Miss Carol, which um, I believe that she's part of the organization in some ways. Mm -hmm. So everyone particularly seemed to be very involved and very dedicated. But at the end, the focus is to help children and schools. So that's what I'm excited about. Well, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. I think that one of the things that sets West Hartford apart as a town is not only the quality of the education that the students receive, but the investment that the overall town community brings to the table when it comes to having a high quality education system that brings uh, attention to the town. If there was one thing that you could tell our donors or potential donors about the foundation, what would it be? Well, um, just stop looking for places where to perhaps donate some money when this is in the right place. Um, uh, the foundation uh, not only manages the funds well, but, but but it's enriched by the group of people that form the foundation. So um, I'm very excited uh, to donate, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that anyone should be well, as well. Mario, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate the chance to talk. Of course. Nice meeting you, Mike. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Well, folks, that's all we've got time for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you'd like to learn more about the foundation or if you'd like to make a gift, please check out our website at fwhps.org.